In an in a ecosystem like Okefenokee, there are many, many avenues of being a predator or a prey. And, and that is what we call an ecosystem. It, it all works together and, 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 and the, the food web in a swamp, in a swamp is, is not one level and another and another and another. It's, it's the highest would be at the top, but it, it's very complicated, very interwoven. The, the uh, animals themselves, animals themselves may not have any idea the, that they are in danger. And here we see a, a, a picture of a, a food web. Uh, they don't, it's not a, just a, 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 a step ladder kind of thing. It's a, a very complex system. One example of that is the barn, I mean the barred owl. One, ex one example is the barred owl. Uh, and the barred owl lives in the longleaf forest. In the longleaf forest, it's an ideal habitat for the fox squirrel. The fox squirrel is th those that are sometimes gray or silver or s maybe even totally black. But they're beautiful squirrels. They're about 30 inches long. They're, they're ground hunting birds. Ho fox squirrels can smell things underground, almost like an armadillo can. They can smell things underground. And the one thing that fox squirrels have learned is that at the base of most big pine trees, there are truffles, there are mushrooms under the ground within inches, maybe four or five or six inches. And fox squirrels are busy uh, <clears throat> hunting and, and digging up truffles underground mushrooms. Uh, that underground mushroom is a part of the nutrient system for the tree, but it's also a source of food for, for, um, for fox squirrels, uh, wild hogs, uh, most any animal that eats mushrooms can smell those truffles underground. Um, so here we have a system, a pine tree, the longleaf pine that, that grows mushrooms at the bottom that feeds the fox squirrel. And when the fox squirrel is in the, out in the open like that, he's susceptible to that owl who's on that limb up there watching him, <laughs> just waiting for an opportunity. Uh, so it's a very complicated, but a very simple system at the same time. Okay. Here's a, an example. Here's an example of a camouflage. If you, can you see an, an animal inside here? Can you tell what he is? This is a screech owl, screech owl. In the, it's sitting inside of the cavity of a tree, very well camoed. Only his eyes are visible. Only his eyes are visible. So he sits and waits with the patience of Job. And when a, when a squirrel or a lizard or a baby bird or anything comes into view, he'll take off. Ladies and gentlemen, in an aquatic system, there's always, we, what we see is the surface of the water. We don't have any concept of, we have very little concept of what's down below that water line. Uh, and that's another different community altogether. And there are more than a hundred different organisms that live under that water line, under the surface of the water. Just a few of them to mention to you this evening. Uh, animals that live on the bottom, animals that live on the bottom. There are little tiny shellfish that live down there. There, certainly there are snails, there are small clams, there are other, 
uh, small animals such as sponges. There are sponges that live under the water. There are two snakes that live there. Two snakes that live down there. One is called the rainbow snake. Beautiful red and black stripes all the way down his, the back of his body. And the, the, the belly is yellow with a double, double row of black dots all the way down, gentle as a kitty cat, just as smooth as silk. They do not bite. They don't bite people. They bite other things that live on the bottom down there, but they don't bite people. And they're easy to handle. They're capable of biting, but they don't bite people for some reason. Um, underneath the water, there are large insects, large insects, such as this walking stick. The, the walking stick is a huge, he may be in reality that long, five, five or six inches long. There are um, small fishes that live down here that we never see. Uh, the gambusio minnow is the, one of the most common we see down there. Uh, and certainly the one that many of us go fishing for, catfish. Catfish are scavengers. They eat anything that they can find on the bottom. And there's a, there's a community of organisms that live there. Uh, also, there's organisms that live there that we cannot see with the unaided eye. Hundreds and thousands uh, of organisms called protozoans, crustaceans, tiny little uh, plant life. They're, they're single cell and multicell cellular algae that live down there uh, and in the water. Um, it's just a, a, very, a very complicated, but a very successful community. And, and it, it is a food web down there. It is a tremendous food web. This is a photo of two animals you may or may not ever see in your lifetime. The one on top is called an amphiuma. Amphiuma, he's an amphibian. He is an amphibian. He lives at the bottom, but on, on warm winter nights when it's raining, he will come out and cross the roads, cross fields, looking for other ponds of water. Uh, amphiuma. He's an amphibian. On the bottom is another organism that looks very much like him. He's called a sirene. Sirene. Uh, he is also an amphibian, but he, he's not, he's, he doesn't have uh, feet like the, little, like the amphiuma does. This one has, only has two legs, and on, that, on these legs he may have one, two, or three toes. Consequently, his name, their names are one-toed, two-toed, three-toed. <laughs> Sirene. He's, a, he's an animal down there that he's a prey animal and a predator at the same time. The, that big snake, the rainbow snake, and his cousin, the mud snake, both of them will eat these huge amphibians. I happened to observe one happening, doing, doing that one time. The big mud snake was wrapped around a rock on the, on, on the side of the bank up at the US-1 bridge, to tell you the truth, because there are rocks there. Uh, he was wrapped around that rock and he, he had an amphiuma in his mouth. And the amphiuma was pulling back into the water and it was a tug of war to see who was gonna get up, up or out, <laughs> in the water or out of the water. And finally the snake won. The big old mud snake won him, pulled him out, and my son and I sit there and watched him eat. That was a, that was a real treat because you rarely ever see those animals. <laughs>